Alright guys, how are you all doing? I'm Fiesta here and today we have AMD Radeon's RX 7900 XT is already getting cheaper NVIDIA has released their DLSS 3.1.0 SDK that also comes with optional auto update feature Windows 11 may soon control RGB lightning on its own with its utility to control the RGB any device basically and lastly, we have NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 laptop GPU might require 20 watts more to reach only uh, the RTX 4090 performance. So that is very strange. So firstly, we have Newegg just uh, had this kind of pricing for the ASRock Radeon RX 7900 XT and also XFX Gaming Radeon RX 7900 XT. And the price is basically you're looking at is the same 879.99 basically $20 less as you can see it was $899 again it's the reference model which was $899 and now we're having a $20 cut and we're getting an $879 not a huge cut but we're already getting a cut in price so that's kind of good I don't know why we're getting that price cut but we are getting that price cut so that is I mean it's I'm not saying it's a good deal or anything but if it's some kind of uh intentional uh cut you know anything can happen if they're planning to cut prices maybe they're planning to cut prices and i guess in time the price will get lower that's what i'm hoping for and if that is the case you might want to you know wait for it next up we have dlss super resolution sdk 3.1.0 got released here and it has some support so basically they have added ability to stay up to date with the latest dlss improvements i guess that's kind of neat feature quality of life feature i could say added ability to customize dlss based on different scaling ratios and game content so basically now you can customize based on the uh, scaling ratios and that's really good for the developers basically like it, you can customize it it's not like direct uh, implementation you can customize a little bit according to the, your you know game and other aspects of the game basically they also updated the dlss programming guide for new api additions performance and optimization fixes and of course the bug fixes and stability improvements these are really normal but they have added this feature here which is nice that you can customize based on your game for the developer for some speaking too so that's kind of good hopefully this feature will not be a problematic even though as this is a new api uh I guess it's going to be a problem for the game developers, developers or it will be taking more time for the game developers to implement because, you know, it's a completely new one. So, again, depends on the game. So, we'll see about that. Next up, we have Albacore, or I should say, ha at the book is closed, added or tweeted this. And basically, it's the new settings for device lightning for the Windows 11, basically. And you wouldn't be require any third party software. So if you look into it, well, we have this utility here, personalization, and we have lightning. And in lightning, we have the gaming keyboard, Steam Deck, precision mouse, RG tricks. I guess the user is using something that has uh, lightning control or RGB uh, available, these features. And now I guess Windows 11 helps you uh, customize it, which is kind of a neat feature, I have to say. Because if you look into it, you can also control the brightness, the lightning effect, you know, breathing or rainbow or something like that. Or effect speed, the color, you know, these such things that you can get from the third party softwares. But now I guess it will you won't need third party softwares because Windows 11 kind of gives you that. I'm, I'm not understanding clearly if this gives you a complete freedom or it has just some sets of presets that you can only select if that is the case i guess it's not that much appealing but if they do have some customization offering then i guess that's gonna be a good feature for most of the people you won't be needing any third party software and rgb well it's gonna be controlled via windows 11 that's nice and lastly we have computer based just benchmark the rtx 4090 and the 4080 laptop gpu and they have found something interesting so if you look into the graph here that they presented this is the fps per watt graph basically or i should say the performance per watt and and in shadow warriors 3 we are getting this kind of performance well 
this chart here, my cursor right here is the RTX 4080 and this one is the 4090. So if you look closely at 150 watts, RTX 4080 is getting around 200 FPS, whereas 4090 is getting a little bit more, which is I'm guessing 225 or 220. So yeah, around that much FPS. We have more detailed benchmark here if you look into it. This is the performance rating and for the gaming specific games we have this one. So right here we have the RTX 4090 laptop which is the 150 plus overclock to 175 basically. So they're adding 25 watts more and this is something interesting that they have found is that RTX 4080 laptop is right around there and as you can see compared to the 4090 RTX 40 or 4090 is around 14% faster. Only 14% is not a big deal. But if you do overclock it and add 20 watts more, I guess that it can reach the RTX 4090 level of performance, which is very strange. So these are the, all the games that we're looking at. You can get into the link in the description and find out what games have what kind of performance. But we have the overview here, as you can see. So there we go, the RTX 4090 laptop in Doom Eternal, we are getting around 197.2 FPS. And if you look into the 4080 laptop, well, it's kind of lagging behind 170, but still the performance uplift is only 16%. Still not a bad uplift, 16% is still quite good, but yeah, it's not too bad. We also have the RTX 4090 laptop, which is, I'm guessing this is the different laptop. Yes, this is a different laptop. And I believe it also has a different processor, so it kind of depends. Like this is the MSI GT77 Titan, basically, and this is the Titanium. So there is a difference in model. So I guess the performance difference will be a bit different. But right here, as you can see, the RTX 4080 XMG Neo getting around 170, but the MSI GT77 getting only 180, so very close. The performance uplift is only 6%. So it's getting closer and closer when you overclock it. So I'm wondering if RTX 4090 laptop is worth the price because you can literally overclock the RTX 4080 and reach the similar level of performance. Very strange, but you can do that, I guess. So I guess 4080 is the way to go for the laptop. All right, that is it for today. What do you think about the RTX 4080 and the 4090 laptop? Like, they're looking like if you can overclock the RTX 4080, you can gain such performance where you can literally match RTX 4090 laptop. But then again, uh, Hardware Unwear Unbox made a video that RTX 4090 not really is a RTX 4090 laptop because, you know, RTX 4090 laptop lags way behind. So basically mentioning it's a fake RTX 4090. But then again, we already know that in terms of laptop, the performance will always go down. For some reason, they always do that marketing gimmick, I guess. But yeah, RTX 4090 doesn't seem like, in terms of laptop, doesn't seem like it's quite worth it because RTX 4090, 4080, and on the other hand, can overclock to that same level of performance or even close to it. Not exactly, but close to it. But yeah, we don't know. We'll see about that. Anyway, have a good day. Like, share, and subscribe because that's the most important thing here. And have a good day.